as best as we can understand from the scientific literature so far, it's a combination similar to eating disorders of genetic, psychosocial, uh, and psychological contributors. So most people characterize it as picky eating. It's more than that. To lead to the nutritional deficiencies uh, and the medical deficiencies we really see with it, it's more than just they can't eat. At Eating Recovery Center, we've learned to really characterize it in subcategories. For instance, aversive is a term that we use to speak to a, a child that has sensory aversions isn't able to eat due to certain textures or taste. We have another category of avoidant, meaning that they had some sort of a significant fear-based experience with a food, um, which could lead to things like choking phobia or vomit phobia. We also look at what we've deemed as ARFID+, plus, meaning some kids that actually have um, some signs and symptoms of anorexia, um, for instance, wanting to lose weight, but it really started in this other picture of the avoidant or the aversive presentation. Uh, there's adult ARFID as well, so this is not just child and adolescents, this is also adults who are impacted. And then there's also a group that really just do not have a drive to eat. It's not necessarily based out of fear or anxiety or an uncomfortable experience with eating, they just lack the drive to actually eat.